FM, guess what? This is where the fun begins. On today's episode of Impulse, I'm back then with Justin to talk about Star Wars Battlefront 2 and whether or not it's worth playing in 2019. So as we both know, uh, Battlefront 2 launched way back when, in 2017, I believe? November. November of 2017. I've said this in the past, but I think 2017 was arguably the worst year in terms of PR for EA ever. Wasn't and very good. Battlefront 2 was probably the main culprit of that. Yeah. Basically, solely due to Battlefront 2, loot boxes were pretty much put into the mainstream news worldwide. I mean, you had senators talking about... Disney selling a Star Wars themed casino to kids, like it was it was something. The House of Mouse can't be happy with that one. Even though like the progression of the game was absolutely flawed and broken. Yeah. So before the game came out, pre-launch week, this is a bit of a misnomer because people could play the game if you bought the Elite Stormtrooper edition. You could play like yeah. a week early. So hundreds of thousands of people are playing, but technically the game wasn't out yet. But you can buy crates and they have star cards in them. And the star cards are basically, you know, abilities and stat boosts you can put on, like, a loadout for your characters and your classes. And they have some pretty significant stat gains. So people are already upset that, like, you could just spend money and get, like, the best cards in the game and, you know, wipe the floor with newer, you know, players. Yeah, especially if you've got a hero with, with a ton of great stat cards. Like, that alone in, in that hero versus mode would yeah. immediately give you a huge edge, so. Yeah, and, uh... The only way to get these star cards was to buy loot boxes. You could craft star cards that you wanted, but the only way to get crafting parts was, can you guess? Loot boxes. <laughs> wow, yeah, to buy loot boxes. So at best, you got the cards you wanted. At worst, you bought enough loot boxes to make the cards you wanted. So controversy galore with that. You know, people obviously, very rightly so, angry. So... DICE disables the crates right before launch, like the day or two before launch. The other thing was that many heroes were locked behind a large paywall of in-game credits, the in-game currency. So, like, you would start the game, and you, would, you wouldn't have, like, any heroes, basically. Like, you want to play as Darth Vader or Luke? <laughs> Sorry. You know, you gotta... Yeah, and then people were doing the, the math on Reddit, and yes. if you were to grind, it would take somewhere in the ballpark of like 30 hours or something like that yeah i saw 40 like thrown a... around a lot for, for yeah. that kind of stuff to earn like darth vader and such that's bonkers so during launch week they lowered the price of heroes but they also lowered the amount of credits you get from the campaign from finishing the campaign and that was sort of their intention with that was that you would finish the campaign and get enough credits to unlock Iden versio <laughs> so as they dropped her price, they dropped the money you get too. I was going to ask if I'd Versio was just like unlocked from the get-go, but the, the fact no. you have to still earn her as well is, yeah, yeah. is just something. So then they promised to change the progression system and everything. From then on, you know, they added uh, some DLC stuff, a story chapter, Last Jedi content, that kind of stuff. And five months later, in March of 2018, uh, the new progression finally rolled out. And they also unlocked all heroes, but DLC heroes from that point forward would cost credits to unlock, you know, ones that are added later, but all the base game heroes uh, were unlocked for everyone. So with the new progression, as you play the game, you get uh, these points that you can use to then unlock star cards, and star cards unlock at tiers at like level 5, 10, 12, you know, whatever, so on and so forth. And same with the upgrades, so you can only upgrade star cards to a certain point, and you have to keep progressing with the character, keep leveling them up, and then you can get those epic tier star cards. That's where the, the progression system is right now. Yeah, so for example, if you want, like, the best officer class, you need to theoretically raise them to level 35 and then have 35, enough skill yeah. points to actually then buy those cards. And the skill point, you'll, you will have enough skill points more than likely, but, um, yeah. yeah, so that's where the progression stands right now. It's not, I guess, too dissimilar to a Call of Duty or something where you have to unlock, create a class, and then unlock more perks and so on and so forth. Although... Star cards are... Yeah, it's a lot better now. ...decently powerful at the higher tiers. Yeah. I would say if, if you're a veteran with, like, a maxed out build, and you've already been playing since... By the way, if you were playing prior to all, the, all these updates, and you already had all this stuff, like, equipped, would that get reset in any way or no? No, I had a bunch of stuff, and it didn't get reset at all. Like, I had from pre-ordering, yeah, I'm a schmuck. Uh, <laughs> I had, like, a Kylo Ren special, like epic force card thing and i 
still have that card. So all the stuff stayed. I still have crafting points uh, that I haven't used. <laughs> Just sitting there. Um, as far as the credits gain goes at this point, it's pretty pretty good, I would say. Uh, you get about 500 credits per game, and there's two games per map. One for each side, like Rebel and Empire. Yeah. Um, and last week, uh, or two weeks ago, um, Anakin came out. Yeah. And uh, I, I spent all my credits. Um, so I was down to, like, I think 5,000 credits. And I played every day, probably an hour, uh, probably closer to two hours a day for a week. And I was back up to 50,000 credits. You know, the credit game now isn't so bad. Yeah, like, I, I just started playing, like, a couple weeks ago. And I already have every hero unlocked, a, a whole bunch of cards on various classes. The only hero I don't have is Obi-Wan Kenobi. That's, like, the last one I'm saving up for at this point. Yeah. It's a lot more digestible. Oh, like, I've only been playing a couple hours every odd day, and I, I feel like it's not that difficult to earn stuff at all. Yeah, since this new progression system came out, they've added, um, they've improved on the squad system so you can spawn on squad members. You couldn't do that on launch. You know, it wasn't like Battlefield. And they've added, uh, solo content. You know, well, solo content from the movie Solo, I should specify. <laughs> they haven't <laughs> added a lot of single player content. Um, they've added a bit, like, ba the, the stuff they've added is basically, like, modes that you can now play in the arcade single-player mode, like Starfighter and uh, Assault and stuff. Um, but they've added a, a bunch of Clone Wars content, mostly. Uh, Grievous, yeah, Obi-Wan, Count Dooku, Geonosis, and recently Anakin. Yeah, th that's basically the content that made me go, I, I should probably check this game out. So I signed up for the Origin Premiere stuff, and then I recently bought it for like $7, so it's constantly on sale, this game, for like the price of a large coffee, so... Yeah. Right from the get-go, you basically have almost every hero unlocked, except for, I guess, DLC ones. And so. from this point forward, from the Anakin update forward, it's even better for new players, because yeah. with the Anakin update, they brought along a bunch of clone armor customization, so you can choose what battalion colors your clone's wearing and stuff like that, and what phase, whether it's phase one or two clone armor. So with that, they gave each player 60,000 credits um, to customize their clones or to buy Anakin or whatever, and that crate that 60,000 credit uh, loot crate thing is for everyone forever. Like, if you buy the game now, if you buy the game in five years, assuming servers are still up, could you imagine if five years it's gone? Yeah. But as for the uh, the current state of the game itself, I've recently been playing through the single player, which, uh, like, the base campaign itself was really never all that great. It was pathetically weak. Uh, they advertised this aspect that you're going to be playing an Imperial Soldier, and you'd be seeing, like, the Imperial side of life. Like, that was heavily, like, You'd see their point of view from Episode 6 to Episode 7. Like, in between Return of the Jedi and Force Awakens, you would see, you know, what the Imperials were doing and, like, the rise of the First Order. And you do get some of that, but the reality is you immediately become a rebel within, like, the first, I would say, it's hour. Like, I think it's, like, the third mission. And not only that, despite all the hype for this character, Iden Versio, <laughs> you maybe play her, like, half the time. Yeah, you're playing the other half heroes. The time, yeah, the other half of the time, you're jumping between, like, Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Leia, Lando. Lando, yeah. It jumps all over the place, and you, you would think playing as Luke Skywalker would be really fun, but instead you're just, like, killing bugs for about 20 minutes. <laughs> it's just, it's baffling. And then my favorite moment in terms of, like, just a bizarre comedic of errors in terms of writing and presentation was playing as Han Solo, because... The game is, like, trying to hype you up, I guess, that you're playing as Han Solo. And I don't remember the exact line, but, like, the character, the like, the NPC character you're guarding in this mission drops a line similar to, like, Wow, I can't believe it's the actual Han Solo! Almost like it's trying to remind you who you're playing as, and it's just... it's baffling. Ah, yes! The mighty Chewbacca! Oh, I can't wait to meet him! Well, the character might not recognize Han because he's got a beard. Yeah. And I think it looks terrible. I'm a very pro-beard person. Most characters with beards, I'm into it. Not that one. And then the game just ends. Like The, the yep. campaign just kind of cuts off in the most bizarre way, too. It's funny because they they later released what's known as the Resurrection DLC. Which I think it was a month later in December. Yeah, which is like a continuation of, of, the, of the campaign that's set like a couple decades later. But the way the base campaign ends is baffling. The mission prior to the last mission is this big epic battle. Where at the end they have like a kiss scene, you know, spoilers. And the perfect ending to that, you think, would be like doing the little circle cut transition to some credits <laughs> after <laughs> they <laughs> kiss. <laughs> but instead it's like, 
it, they do a transition and it cuts to like decades later and then you're playing as Kylo Ren and then you kill a dude and then it ends and then the the resurrection DLC takes off from there it's so weird you would think you would take that decades later sequence and make that the DLC but they didn't they took like the intro of the DLC my hunch is they ran out of time because I, I'm assuming maybe the game had to be shipped and you know they're already printing off copies and stuff so like they just they just resorted to finishing up the campaign in the form of you know free DLC. I mean the whole campaign's underwhelming. I didn't find it incredibly enjoyable in any regard. So, <laughs> but you get credits for playing it, I guess. Which yeah, back when you I get a bunch of credits, I guess. Back when I started the game, uh, I needed those. It helped me buy Count Dooku. As for the uh, the multiplayer, the, the state of the multiplayer, the meat and potatoes of the game. Certain modes, stuff like Ewok Hunt, which I was really excited for when I saw the trailer of that. It's a lot of fun. It looks it looks like a lot of fun. I wouldn't know. It's <laughs> it's pretty yeah. dead on the PC side of things. Like you can't even get a match going at all. We're playing on PC, so we can't really speak entirely for the console side. Although from what I've read on the Star Wars Battlefront Reddit, the PS4 and Xbox communities are doing better with the PS4 community obviously doing the best. Not really surprised there. They got the most players. Yeah. Um, we we're mostly playing on the US East server, maybe some US West. I heard the Australian servers are pretty terrible and dead so the biggest modes like the galactic assault which is like the main mode yeah and the starfighter uh assault like the spaceship combat you can usually find match that pretty quickly no problem on pc the other modes like the hero showdown uh or the like blast or strike the smaller uh ground force only modes those take a little bit but you'll still probably find a game if you wait for a while then the other modes like Ewok Hunt are just straight up dead. You will never find a game. Which uh, I, I hope they can address that maybe in the future by maybe yeah. being able to populate the matches with bots like you could in the original Battlefront games because I would at least like to experience it and play it. It'd be nice if it had a uh, server browser of some sort in the future. Oh, yeah, a server browser would be a godsend because we've had trouble like even like matchmaking on rather... What, what, what you would think would be busy times, and even during the weekend. Well, yeah, we, we, we would have trouble matchmaking. We'd get into a match with no one, we'd exit, and then we'd matchmake again, we'd find a match completely full of people. Like, it would, it just seemed random, like, you know? I, if I could just see a list that said, there's 30 of, like, 30 people in this match, oh, look, easy, click, you know? Yeah. Play. Uh, the recent Battlefield games have started putting server browsers back in, so hopefully we get a server browser again. In fact, they've been supporting this game. Is a huge effort, especially after how it launched. Uh, that said, I am curious if the Battlefront 3 will actually, if, if that's even the cards, I'm not even sure. I don't know because they're not, like, Battlefront 1 came out, well, Battlefront 1, Battlefront 2015, to be specific, yeah. came out when Episode 7 did. Then they skipped the next year because Rogue One came out that year. They didn't do any, they released content, but they didn't make a new game. Then the next year with Episode, uh, Episode 8, they did Battlefront 2. Uh, they skipped last year, 2018, added solo content. So then the pattern would say that this year we'd get a Battlefront 3, but it doesn't look like that. It looks like we're going to get Episode 9 content. Uh, at least the devs have hinted that we're getting Episode 9 content in this game. It doesn't seem to be that we're getting a new game, but who knows, maybe. I don't know. To be fair, they could be developing it for next-gen systems. Yeah, I mean, that's those are around the corner. But, uh, like Overall, though, the game still looks absolutely stunning. Um, in some areas, I would say Battlefront 2015 still has a bit of an edge. Yeah, there's some weird edge cases where side-by-side, side, like, certain parts of the lighting or the explosions in one game looks better than the other, but it, it's a very case-by-case case thing. But, you know, compared to the original games, it's it's a leap, for it's sure. definitely a lot better than that. Overall, though, my favorite maps are definitely some of the newer content, uh, the Clone Wars stuff specifically. Like, I love the Kashyyyk and Geonosis maps. If I could just set up some sort of playlist option with a server browser and just have those two maps on rotation at different times of the day, I'd be set. I'd be happy. I'd just play that all day. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing with no server browser is you don't really know what map you're going to go to. The maps are in a set order of yeah. when the battles happen in canon. Yeah, so every now and then you get crate and you kind of drone because that, that map is like some trench warfare tier shit and I'm not crazy about it. The first part of that map can be pretty rough. Uh, yeah. The other ones are all right, but I mean, I have fun on mostly all the maps, although the standouts definitely, I like Geonosis a lot. 
I like um, Death Star 2. Yeah, Death Star 2 is pretty fun. To run around Death Star 2, the Death Star alarm's going off. Not only that, but the way it starts with the Rebels too, with that ship that's like crashed into the Death Star itself, and just turning around and seeing that, just seeing the wreckage, I love that. That's just incredible. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Like overall, the, the core mode of the game is fantastic. Like I still think the battlefield approach to Battlefront works great, and I think dice are yeah. perfectly suited for this IP. I just hope if there is a Battlefront 3, that they avoid the very obvious mistakes. Yeah, and even furthering the whole dice-making Battlefront with Star Wars skin like they should have just done in the first place, coming uh, this month in March of 2019, uh, there's a new mode which they are saying is like a control point capturing, you know, game mode, much like the old games. So, hopefully... But overall, the state of the game right now, would you recommend playing Battlefront 2 in 2019 for the price of a, a large coffee? Uh, I definitely would. I, you know, I've been playing it for a while. I bought it full price because I'm a schmuck, and uh, I, you know, I like Star Wars. I so waited. I'm, I'm a little biased. I got the premiere thing, and then I bought it for like, I think like 8 bucks in Canadian money. At that price range, i definitely recommend it. I'd say just avoid the campaign, just go right into the multiplayer. It's it's not even worth your time, I would say, with the campaign. Uh, unless you just want to see some really bad dialogue with Han Solo. Hey, that that part was funny. Everything else was just kind of boring. Yeah, no, I'm with you there. Um, I mean, more content is coming, like I said. There's two new reinforcement classes coming that you could play as. Uh, new game mode. Uh, lightsaber combat rework, because of the hero side of things. The hero versus hero stuff. Definitely use a rework. And uh, most importantly, Count Dooku's pajamas. We can rock Dooku in his jammies. And uh, Anakin, uh, buff, yeah, or debuff. He's... <laughs> Nerf is what people are calling for. He, Anakin's very strong. He is definitely the chosen yeah. one. Yeah, uh, Annie can wreck your shit from a mile away. But just sort of the base loop for me of jumping into a Galactic Assault game, trying to get as many points as I can super quickly so I can play as a hero, and trying to get a long, good kill streak as a hero, I find incredibly addictive, and I love doing it. It's fun to, like, do that as a duo as well, and, like, yeah. spawn on one another, buff one another, and, like, keep swapping between heroes and doing that. It's pretty great. Uh, if I have one thing right now that I, I will detract from this game, there's no droidicas! Yeah, people were thinking that the new reinforcements they were gonna uh, put in would, would be droidicas, and it's not, not droidicas. I mean, the, the chat of droids is there, you know, the, the battle droid, but there's sure. no... There's no droid kids, which are like the alphas. It's pretty upsetting. It's true. It's a shame. <laughs>